the senseless death of an average Queenslander. Patrick James Bourne, my uncle on my father's side, was born in Gympie on the 2nd of May 1916 to John Rudolph and Clarissa Ida Bourne. Shortly after his birth, the family moved to Toowoomba, where they remained until he was six years old. Following the death of his father, his mother, brother and two sisters moved to Tagulawal in the Brisbane Valley. He attended primary and secondary school in Tagulawal and on leaving school became a linotype operator. On the 16th of March 1939, he joined the 2nd 14th Light Horse Regiment at the Kelvin Grove Barracks in Brisbane. He was 23. Patrick was an average Queenslander who could have been just a face in a crowd, but he was very important to his family, especially his mother, as he was now the eldest male in the family. Following basic training, he was marched out to 8th Division AM Company and TOG at Inogra, where he was classified as a driver, mechanic, JS3. He remained there until he was marched out to East Command on the 21st of April 1941. Six days later, he was transferred to 8 DAC in Bathurst, New South Wales. On the 24th of July 1941, he was transferred to 27 BDE Company of the Australian Army Service Corps, which was part of the Australian 8th Division. By the 7th of August that same year, he had worked his way up to the rank of corporal. During this time, his army history, except for his medical records, are very scratchy. His die was cast, however, when on the 8th of July 1942, he embarked with the rest of B Force, 8th Division, together with the 2nd 10th Field Regiment for Singapore. The next entry into his service records, undated, was died whilst POW cause not stated. What happened in those three long years is, so far, a mystery to us. We do know that he was captured by the Japanese at the fall of Singapore. He was part of the 2,400 Australian prisoner of war whom the Japanese transported from Singapore and Malaysia to the death camp at Sandakan in Borneo. Of those 2,400 Australians, only six survived. According to eyewitness accounts, he died on the 27th of May 1945, one day prior to the start of the infamous death march. Here, British and Australian POWs were marched towards Renau in the hinterland of the island to hide them from Allied forces. This was done to keep the atrocities carried out on the Australians by the Japanese from the outside world. The Death March is another horrendous story on its own. From the eyewitness accounts, his death was long and agonising. None of us can have any idea what traumas Patrick and his fellow prisoners endured at the hands of the cruel and ruthless Japanese guards. My father was never able to visit his brother's grave. My brother and I visited Borneo as a promise to my father after his death. It was in the middle of this year. We saw firsthand where Uncle Pat was housed on the first night of his arrival in Sandakan, where he was interned in what are now the remains of Camp 1 and where he was initially buried. It is now a housing estate. The camp was burned to the ground by the Japanese, but there are still many relics left to remind us what was there and what happened there. It is impossible now to imagine just what happened there to average Queenslanders. It is an emotional and eerie sight that brought many tears to my eyes and one that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Patrick is now buried on Labuan Island, together with 89 other Australians, as an unknown soldier. He has no known grave. 
What a senseless waste of a life of an average Queenslander.